And, and when you think of classic kind of profiling groups or groups that, of types of criminals or people that would be psychopaths, etc., that you would gather, they fell in the traditional categories that you could see here in the graph. Uh, the last one that was a little atypical that I dealt with was the uh, functional psychotics, and that would be, you know, the John Hinckley's, the Mark David Chapman's of the world that weren't motivated by traditional means. And that was an important thing later as we get to cyber criminals, which we're going to be discussing in great detail, that not the, the normal considerations of behavior and the things that define behavior aren't always true. Because most of the people that I dealt with in the prison were driven by the classic Mr. Green. They either had a drug addiction, they didn't want to work that hard, they didn't agree with the rules of society, and they pursued a different form of economic uh, enrichment that's outside of uh, the, the framework that most of us exist. So we're going to start with the Sergey Brin, the founder of Yahoo, the Uber event of the Darknet, and it certainly has to center around this individual, this avatar, Dread Pirate Roberts. And the first thing I'm going to notice when I point it out to you is exactly what I just described, the avatar. So in the criminal world that I worked in, if you were a major heroin dealer or a white collar criminal, you didn't hide behind an avatar or a superhero type character. You actually were either tried to completely hide yourself or you, proud, you were proud and put yourself up as someone to be admired in the criminal economy, the John Gotti's of the world, etc. But in this world, in the dark net, and which is true in a lot of cybercrime, the individual hides behind the avatar. And many of you probably have experienced, uh, or have kids that have experienced cyberbullying. You can imagine that when the internet anonymizes you, and you can become the thing that you want to become, it actually develops something quite interesting and in many ways quite sinister. So Dread Pirate Roberts decides that he's going to use this combination of Tor and Bitcoin to disrupt the $500 billion drug market. And he goes smack dab in the middle of this. So what could possibly go wrong? And, and, I, and I'm always thinking when I'm looking at the slide, what is the scarier part of disrupting the drug market? Is it the law enforcement people or is it the drug cartels? I personally think it's the drug cartels. So let's look a little bit deeper at Ross Albrecht. And one of the things that's interesting in this particular case, and I think you can see how we're arguing this position that there really is a differentiator between the blue, white collar, and cyber criminal. If you look at Ross Albrecht's information, and this was his LinkedIn page, you can start seeing sort of these libertarian leanings, which many of us have. The difference between Ross Ulbrich, the Libertarian, and Dan Weiss, the Libertarian, is he was really willing to push it to a level that most of us would not be willing to push it to. You know, he understood that by creating this marketplace of illegal activity and Silk Road started trading credit card information, drugs, a lot of other things, he believed that these drug laws and many of these other drugs were other laws were immoral and wrong. And so instead of just deciding to work in the body politic, like in a group like, uh, you know, legalization of marijuana, he said, screw it. They start a marketplace where everyone's buying and selling. They're gonna start using cryptocurrencies. It's gonna be anonymized. No one will be able to find us. And I'm not gonna wait for society to change. I'm gonna change it myself. And he, he took a huge risk and it turns out uh, his, his risk ends him up in jail. And so what you really see um, is the evolution between both the blue collar and white collar criminal that I dealt with early in my career, to this evolution of a cyber criminal. And I will go so far as to say that we believe there are actually three distinct type of criminal classes now, blue collar, white collar, and cyber criminal. And I'm gonna describe that in, in more depth here, but the motivation between the blue collar, white collar, and the cyber criminal can be pretty, a lot of variants, some similarities, but variant enough that I think it, it calls for a, a unique distinction and classification.